Hello everybody, my name is Phil Rowley and today I'm coming to you from Roseburg, Oregon, home of Spirit River, uh, purveyor of flying, fine fly tying materials and tools. It's a great place to come if you're a fly tire. I'm in the area touring around speaking to some clubs and just thought I'd show you one of my favorite Stillwater fly patterns. Now when you see this fly at the end, there is nothing in nature that looks like this. This is a total attractor fly. Its uh, origins are back in Europe and England. It's called the booby and it is a all about when trout are not feeding on actual food sources, they're off the bite and this is something you're going to shake their little world up and get them to take an aggressive uh, approach to this fly. So in the vise I've got a short shanked scud hook, it's a number eight. Uh, we want short shanked hooks with this, we fish this fly actively. If you fish it slowly there is a risk the fish can take the fly deeply. So for the, for the actual foam eyes, we're going to get those prepared. We're just using some of the uh, foam bug cylinders in a quarter inch in the orange. Um, you can do these flies in a myriad of color combinations. So we're going to take this foam bar and cut it in half. And then we're just going to take our scissors and just sort of tilt them on the edge. Curved scissors work good for this, but a standard pair of scissors works fine as well. And we're just going to round the edges. And it doesn't have to be geometrically perfect, just around the edges, just helps this fly wobble and shake in the water a little better. And then do the same on the other side. This is nice dense foam. This fly has got a long marabou tail, a uh, body on it. It's very simple um, to tie, but it the combination of the foam which adds buoyancy, so this fly is going to ride up and down like this as you strip it. It's going to wobble, everything's going to animate, and we've got we're also blending in some of the new UV2 materials. So I've got those eyes prepared. I've set those aside. I'm going to cover the hook shank with the 140 denier tying thread. And we want to use a, a firm thread on this because we're going to be needing some thread tension. This is some of the fluorescent orange in the UV2 material. Beautiful plume here. What we're going to do is I'm just going to strip off one side of this plume. The sort of sweet spot, if you will, the middle two thirds of the feather and we're just going to sort of strip everything so the tips are more or less aligned and I strip and then I fold. So I strip off what I can manage and then I roll what I've stripped onto what I haven't stripped and just continue this process One tip plume there getting in the way and just continue to roll and strip all the way down until I remove it and you get a nice relatively even because I like to keep my tips intact. I don't want to pinch this. I feel you get better movement with the materials and we can moisten them a little bit to keep them under control and we want a long tail on this and by long I mean about twice the shank length long. Lots of action. So I'm going to take that measurement there, take my scissors, trim away the excess, trim it all over me, secure that down by the butts and then using thread tension and lifting up slightly see how that material stays right on top of the hook shank. It's not going to walk around on you get out of control. And I'm going to put a few wraps again lift that up and just put a few wraps underneath the tail that will help cock it up. Now we're going to use you could dub a body, you could just cover it with thread, you could use crystal chenille. I'm going to use some of the UV um, two materials in the scud orange. This is unique stuff because it's got a core of a whole spectrum of different UV reflectance and fluorescence that's common to all the dubbing blends and then the core color, the orange, is added so you get this beautiful spectrumized uh, blend of dubbing. Lots of different colors in there and that whole UV fluorescence and reflectance in there that trout can see. We can't see into that range but trout certainly can and it's often used as a key trigger for them to feed. So this is really unique materials that the folks down here at Spirit River have gotten into. So we're just going to take and form a dubbing loop, get the remnants of our other dubbing out of there, and then we're just going to take a pinch of this dubbing, kind of just massage it around, and then we're going to start by taking a small pinch, a little dab will do you, less is more with dubbing, slide that up into position, do the same. I like to, again, open the loop at the bottom and slide the material up into position and making sure I'm getting my dubbing evenly distributed throughout the dubbing noodle. So when I'm happy with that, see there, I'm just going to start giving it a spin. 
tighter, tighter, tightest. And when those fibers, they'll start to twist like a drill bit and eventually they'll start to radiate out perpendicular to the dubbing noodle and that's when you know you've got things nice and tight. You can preen it a little bit, take any fibers that perhaps aren't quite entrapped into the noodle, noodle and then we'll start winding this forward. Again, you can moisten your marabou tail, keep that out of the way. All the way up, one turn right in front of the other. Sweep those fibers back. One more turn. I've got about two, my thread is hanging about two hook eye widths back from the hook eye. So I have space to tie on those eyes we prepared right up front. Trim off the excess, sweep that dubbing back. And if you want, you can take a Velcro teaser at this point and just roughen the dubbing. This adds to the translucency. It's going to give some more of the material is going to flow back into the tail. It's got nice contrast. We've got that hot orange total attractor color. There's nothing in a lake that I've ever seen that's hot orange like this and certainly doesn't have these eyeballs on it. So to do these eyes, what we're going to do is tie them in by bringing the tying thread down. I'm going to go around the eyes once, a little bit of tension, twice, three times, right in the midsection. And now we just start winding the eyes and eventually that thread will walk the eyes right up onto the hook. And then we just grab them and start figuring them in figuring them in, figure eating them in like a spinner wing. And I'm pulling, this is where the 140 denier tying thread comes in. Because we're figure eighting in and around to secure them in place. And then we're just going to whip finish. A little head. Disengage. Trim. And your all orange boobies there. You can come in with a little super glue. Brushable type, it flows nicely. Put that in there, and then you can roll the fly upside down and secure the tie off area. A few little bits there. And there you go. This is one weird looking fly. This is got the UV fluorescent. This is a material, again, as I said in the beginning, this is all about aggravating a trout making it be the predator it was born to be. So this fly goes through the water, it's wobbling, it's creating that hydrodynamic disturbance these eyes are, which gets this tail moving. It's obviously vibrant in color. We make these in hot orange, all black, white, uh, sort of peach or coral colors, uh, which are well represented in the UV2 materials range. And uh, the combination of the materials, the color combinations, and this fly's action, um, just drives fish crazy. Doesn't work all the time, but when you've tried every imitative fly in the box, you're going to make them eat. And this is a fly that's designed to make fish eat. Fish it fast, fish it on the surface as a disturbance fly. Uh, in a team of flies, you can put this on the point. Uh, in a washing line situation, it'll hold your flies up, or you can fish it at depth with fast sinking lines, that aggressive four to five inch retrieve, almost like you're popping a thermometer when you do it, and this thing is wobbling and shaking, and Hang on, because the takes are aggressive to this fly. So there you go. Add this to your box and make sure you use some of these UV2 materials because they are wonderful. We'll see you next time.